Welcome back, everyone. Uh, before we get into the bulk of the list, a few couple, a couple of things. First of all, I, yes, I did screw up the numbering last time. Last list was not seventy through or see yeah, seventy through sixty one. It was sixty through fifty one. So just to, to take ten off of what I said, and yeah, I, I fixed the title on YouTube, but there's no way I'm going back and re-recording -re or anything. It's fine. Um, that's the first explanation. The second one, if you prefer, is that it was a test and Matthew is the only one who passed because he let me know of the issue. Although Amy then passed the further test when she told me that I had actually labeled, re, when I re-edited, I labeled it 60 through 11 and not 60 through 51. Um, so that's, if you prefer that explanation, that, that's the better explanation. Um, so that means this list is beginning the top 50. So that's exciting. Uh, this is 50 through 41, unless I screw it up again. Uh, and uh, just there's a couple of games on this list that are kind of going to surprise, I think. They're going to surprise the owners that they're this high. Um, <clears throat> which also means that those are games I don't have. Uh, um, but yeah, you'll, you'll I'll, I'll mention those when I get to them. Um, so, first game on the list, though, number 50, is Ethnos. Ethnos is a game of hand management and area control and it has there's 12 different fantasy races you play with six of them in a at any given game so there's a lot of variability um and i really like it, it plays well with six um i think probably better with five but it's a decently heavy game that plays well with six not too heavy i would say this is just like a step above ticket to ride um and in fact this would be a good next step for someone who's really into Ticket to Ride, in my opinion. Um, the art is by John Howe, who, as we all know, is one of the famous Lord of the Rings uh, artists. Uh, so that's kind of cool, too. Um, this is a game that has not gotten as much, I guess, love and critical acclaim as I would think it would. Um, I'm a big fan, and every time I play it, I'm like, oh yeah, why don't let more people play this game? Uh, anyway, that's number 50, Ethnos. Number 49 is the first of three games on this list, on the, on this 10, that are going to surprise the owners that they're this high. Uh, this is La Isla, or La Isla, or La Isla, I don't know, L-A space I-S-L-A. Um, anyway, my friend Bob owns this game, and it's really good and like, I don't know, it's a weird level of complexity. You're sent, you're trying to like, uh, to capture these various different animals or something, or I don't know, take pictures of them or something. Who knows? You're like jungle explorers with all these rare animals. Um, but you also get special cars that do special abilities, but the actual mechanics are very simple. The special abilities just kind of add to that. And the scoring is very interesting as well. Um, you can specialize in one animal. You can go for all of them. Really like it. That's uh, number 49, La Isla. Isla. Um, number 48 is the first of two games on this list that I have not played a physical copy of. This list meaning the top 100. Um, I, I think there's only two, um, and I've played this one only on Board Game Arena, who is still not sponsoring my videos despite my literally dozens of views. Um, and that is number 48, Russian Railroads. Russian Railroads is a worker placement game, and it's a real brain burner. Um, it is like the theme is railroads and you are like pushing these rail lines further ahead to score more points at the end of each at the end of each round. But in the end, it's really a work replacement game. Um, and it's it's very good. It's yeah, one of the I mean, work replacement games, not all of them, but a lot of them, in my opinion, tend to be like really thinky because you're like, oh, I really want that space, but what if someone else takes it before it gets back around to me? But I, I probably value more highly than everybody else. I don't know. Um, and yeah, so big fan, Russian Railroads, uh, play it on Board Game Arena with me. Send me a message. I'll play with you. It's a great game. Number 47 is Love Letter. One of the smallest games on my list, maybe the smallest game on my list, uh, Love Letter is mostly just a small deck of cards. Oh, let's see, these are reference cards. So you got what? Even how many cards here? 5, 10, 
15 cards. 15 cards in this game, and you have all these characters, and you're trying to get a love letter to the princess, which is obviously a fantastic theme, very manly. Lots of good memories playing this game at Lishko's wedding, actually, um, which was a real good time. So shout out to Lishko and Monica um, for, for their wedding, which was great. Um, love letter plays quickly. It's like three or four people. You can just play to like, you know, you can play as many rounds as you want. Technically, you're supposed to be the first one to collect three cubes wins um, or something like that. Maybe four in a three-player game. Uh, but um, it's also on Board Game Arena with the expanded edition, which includes a, like a lot more characters, which I'm not a huge fan of. Part of the, the appeal of Love Letter is how short it is and how you have like some fun decision making and you can get people out but they don't have to wait very long to get into the next round because you know player elimination is is a bad mechanic and it's widely considered in the board game in the board game community that player elimination is a bad feature in a game um with love letter yeah you might be eliminated that but then you're back in like five minutes later at the most and so that's fine but in a game like monopoly for example it sucks because like now you're out of the game but you know the rest of your friends are still playing and maybe for like an hour more or two hours more stupid mechanic anyway tangent and uh, that was number 47 love letter uh number 46 is the second game on this list that i think the owner is going to be surprised at how how high it is this is a game called rail pass um and this is a kenny owns this game it is, hey, it's the second uh, railroad theme game on my list, neither of which are actual true railroad games. There's like this whole subset of board games that are like railroad games, like the 18xx series, that are super intense, like probably too much for me. Um, anyway, Rail Pass is a cooperative game in which you're trying to shift these little cubes over to the various people that they go to on the table, but you have to put them on these trains to do so and so and if you drop them off the trains they're out of the game so it's a bit of a dexterity game kind of um but really it's a cooperative game where you're just trying to pass the trains to each other and when you're passing a train to someone else you have to say toot toot which is one of the best parts of the game and one of the most important rules you can't break that rule um and then there's like little obstacles you might have to get the trains through and it's just absurd and timed so you're trying to move these cubes as quickly as possible without having them fall off and you're trying to pay attention to where your engineers are so they don't wind up in someone else's city because if they wind up two cities away from you then they're lost to you forever um yeah really fun big fan and quite easy to play i wouldn't say easy to learn um i, I think it would be a good game with kids too that's number 46 rail pass Number 45 is the only one player game, one player only game on my list. And it, I think it's the only it's the only solo game that I own that's designed to be played by only one player. And that is Friday by Freedom and Freeze. Fun fact, all of Freedom and Freeze's games begin with the letter F. Um, although he also designed Power Grid, which of course is Funkenschlag in Germany. Um, Power Grid will not be on the list, this list. Not a fan. Um, in Friday, you play as Robinson Crusoe, or you play as Friday. You're trying to help Robinson Crusoe, who's a bit of an idiot. You're trying to help him like survive. And there's different difficulty levels. I think I've I'm at the point where I'm like fairly regularly beating difficulty level number three. Um, so I'm, I need to bump it up to four, and then eventually five. And then at the end of the game, you have to fight off these pirates. Um, this is a deck building game it's a one player deck building game and it works it's it's really good full game takes maybe 20 25 minutes um yeah it's this is a really excellent gift to get for someone if you know someone who is really into board games but there's but their spouse and the people that they don't have many friends around them who are this one friday by Friedman Fries. It's fun. Number 44 also begins with the letter F. It is the newest game on this list. Came out this year. This is Fort. Fort is by Leader Games. Um, 
although this is a, re a redo of a game that, that was designed by and designed and independently released by uh, by a different designer. It's not their, not their usual design team. Uh, the art is by Kyle Farron, who is a fantastic board game artist um, who I will talk about in a little bit as well. <laughs> um, and in Fort, you're playing as kids and you're trying to build a fort, paint out, eat pizza, gather toys. The theme is great. Um, it's actually a lot more complicated than you might think it would be. This is not a game for kids. Um, I mean, certainly, you know, like a 10 year old could learn this game, but the strategy is not very intuitive. Kind of hard to learn. Great game though. It's a deck building game, but it's a take on the deck building genre that is very different because there's no currency to acquire new cards. You simply acquire a new card at the end of your turn. And you can take that card either from the common supply um, or you can take it from the cards that other people didn't play on their turn. So you can take it from other people's decks in certain cir circumstances, which is really fascinating. Um, yeah, really interesting game. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, we got it partially because of the art, because Amy's a big fan of Kyle Farron's art, and she got to meet Kyle Farron at uh, Hacks Unplugged last year. The first and so far only board game convention I've gotten to go to, which was canceled this year due to, you know, global pandemics. Um, that was 44 Fort. That's, that's nice. 44 Fort. Didn't do that intentionally. Number 43 is the third and final game on this 10 and that the owner is going to be surprised at how high this is. I can remember, never remember who owns this game. I think it's Kenny. It might be Bob. Um, uh, number 43 is Spoils of War. Spoils of War is a Viking themed game that is essentially a liar's dice fixed. Liar's Dice is kind of a stupid game. Uh, sorry to all you Liar's Dice fans out there, including my in-laws. Um, <laughs> not a huge fan of Liar's Dice, but in Spoils of War, it connects it to, um, you know, basically, it connects it to more. It connects it to betting on the outcome. And then if you win the bet, you get some interesting cards that you can collect for various points. Um, there's some special abilities on some of the cards, and so it's just by adding more meat to the game of Liar's, Liar's Dice, it really makes it actually very enjoyable. Um, so that's number 43, Spoils of War. Number 42 is Kingsburg. Kingsburg is a dice placement game. Um, not the last one you'll see on, see on this list. But Alien Frontiers is not on this list. I would prefer Kingsburg to Alien Frontiers nine times out of ten. Um, sorry to Andy Haig and other people I used to play Alien Frontiers with. Um, in Kingsburg, so you roll you roll your dice, uh, you move your mice, nobody gets hurt. No, in Kingsburg, you roll these dice and then you put them out on this board where there's various different people you can influence in the kingdom to get points, to get resources, to build buildings, to get special abilities. Um, really great game. I really want the expansion, which is out of print, or the second edition, which the second edition kind of includes the expansion. But hard to justify spending money on a second edition when you have the first edition, and it's really good anyway. So that's number 42, King's Creek. And finally for this 10, number 41. Oh gosh, that box is heavier than it looks. Root. My wife Amy's favorite game, at least as of now. Um, Root is a game of Woodland Might and Right. Um, art is by Kyle Farron. This is again from Leader Games. This is asymmetric factions to the max. Um, it's a game in which you're fighting in the woodlands, but your faction works completely differently from everybody else's. Um, so in the base game here, you have the cats who are in control of the, of the board. Um, they're, and they basically have guys everywhere except one spot. Um, you have the airy, which are these birds who are like the, the old rulers of the forest and they're concentrated in one area, but then they spread out explosively and they actually have a programming aspect to their faction. You have the Woodland Alliance who doesn't even start on the board, um, but they're essentially like rebe a rebellion, um, terrorists, you might say, if you're the cats. Um, and you have the Vagabond, who doesn't have armies, he just has 
his one little pawn of himself, and he moves around either like doing his own thing, like trading maybe, doing quests, or maybe like going crazy and attacking a bunch of people. Lots of different ways to play the Vagabond. Um, this game is fascinating. It's hard. We have both of the major expansions that add in a total of four new factions, the Lizard Cult, um, the COVID Conspiracy, which is a little bit concerning in 2020, but it's, you know, birds. Uh, it's ravens, I guess. Crows? Ravens? Yeah. Um, and the Underground Duchy, which is the moles. You can pop up at various different places in the board by tunneling. Um, and the, the, the Merchant Guild, well, I can't remember the name of their faction, but it's like otters, and they, like, other factions can buy them as mercenaries or use their waterways and stuff. Um, each game is fascinating because you're playing with probably different factions and they all work so differently that it's just mind bending. Um, I find this game a little bit difficult because usually I'm the one who's both teaching and ensuring that the rules are followed. Um, and that makes it a little bit less enjoyable of an experience for me because it's very hard to play your own faction well when you're making sure that everybody else is playing their faction correctly. Um, gets a lot better if you're not teaching the game to new people. Um, but because each faction is different, each time you play the game, you kind of have to learn new rules. Oh my gosh, my arms are getting tired from holding this thing up. This is jam-packed. Like, the lid won't even close because we have a bunch of expansion stuff in here. And there's another box full of stuff, too. Anyway, that's number 41, Root. And now I get to uh, be have that fun thing where every game higher on the list now. Uh, my wife will be like, why is that higher than Root? Um, so, that, so that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so that's 50 through 41. That is the, uh, the first part of the top 50. So I got four more of these videos to do. Looking forward to that. And thanks for joining me. Have a good one.